Welcome back to Museum Storytime with me and Albany Mouse. Can you give Albany here a big wave and say hello? Hello. Good job everyone. So today for Museum Storytime, Albany has chosen this storybook and it's called Little Bear's Spring by Ellie Willard. And we have decided to read our story in the museum's natural Northumbria gallery because in this storybook there's lots of beautiful pictures and the Albany of the woods and the woodlands and so we're going to read our story in front of this case here which has lots of woodland animals in and so the first thing we need to do to make sure we're ready for museum story time is make sure that we're sitting nice and comfortably so just like Albany here can you have a big wiggle it get nice and comfy for story time good job and then the next thing we need to do is make sure that our story ears are listening so starting at the bottom of your ears can you find your ears good job so starting at the bottom give them a little wiggle Ooh, wiggle wiggle that's it wake them up for story time and then do the middles of your ears too Ooh, wiggle 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 well done and then the tops of your ears. Ooh, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. That's it. Albany, do you think your story time ears are ready? Oh, yes. Good. Albany says yes, his story ears are definitely ready. So I'm going to sit Albany here. There he is. And I hope that you're sitting comfortably too. Because let's start our story. Little Bear's Spring. One day when the snow still lay hard on the ground, a bear cub woke up and he looked all around. There were no other creatures to see there at all. How vast the world seemed and the bear felt so small. Is anyone out there? The little cub cried. But no, the wind whispered and no, the snow sighed. And the bear said, there's only this little round stone and it looks rather lost and so sad and alone. But when the bear picked up the stone from the slope, it felt warm like a promise and smooth like a new hope. The bear said, dear stone, now at least I've got you. I'll keep you beside me whatever I do. Then he tucked it in tight to the fur on his back and went lippity loppity off down the track. The bear with his stone trudged for miles here and there till he spotted some birds in that wide empty air. Birds, he called out, will you please come and play? But the bird said, we're busy as spring's on its way. Oh, the bear muttered. So what is spring? Spring, said the bird, it's a magical thing. The sun shimmers out through the cold winter's gloom and the buds open up and burst forth into bloom. Oh, said the bear, I could help build a nest, but although the bear tried, his attempts weren't the best. Oh dear. So the bear lolloped off down the track all alone, saying, oh well, at least I have you, dear stone. On which they tramped till they came to a place where a family of hares were all having a race. Hares, the bear called, will you please play with me? But the hares said, we're busy, spring's near, can't you see? Oh, the bear muttered, but what is spring? Spring, said the hares, is a beautiful thing. The air throbs and hums with the hum of the bees and the sky comes alive in the warm wafting breeze. Oh, said the bear, I could learn how to leap, but although the bear tried, oh dear, he just fell in a heap. So the bear lolloped off down the track all alone, saying, oh, well, at least I have you, dear stone. Then they trudged once again as the sun sank down low, till they came to some wolves slinking off through the snow. Wolves, the bear said, can I join you tonight? 
night? Oh yes, go out the holes, as the spring is in sight. Good, 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 the bear stammered. But what is the spring? Spring, said the wolves, is a wonderful thing. After long, hungry months, we find nice things to eat. Now come nearer, my dear, you look ever so sweet. Then the bear, feeling scared, quickly flew up a tree, where he sighed to himself, hmm, maybe spring's not for me. Spring should be happy, but I'm so alone. All I have is my little round stone. But when the bear reached for the stone on his back, it slipped, oh dear, and it tumbled, and the cub saw a crack. Oh, stone, said the bear, you're no good anymore. And he kicked it away on the soft forest floor. In sand he felt empty and lonely and lost, as bleak as the sky and as cold as the frost. Then the bear lolloped off, but he shivered in fright, for where was the track in the black of the night? So cradled in, a, in starlight, he slumped down to sleep until the next morning he heard a loud cheep. Who's this? Oh, the bear cried. Why, I thought stones were dead. But I got it all wrong. You are living, he said. Then the breeze softly breathed, and the sun shone down bright, and all of a sudden the world felt so right. Friend, the bear said, maybe you'll come and play. So that's what they did for the rest of the day. Oh, look, he's playing. His stone wasn't a stone. It was an egg. And look, the little birds come out, and now they're playing together. Then the bear with his friends, snuggled tight on his back, went lippity-loppity off down the track. And as they walked onwards, his heart seemed to sing with the magical, wonderful joy of the spring. The end. Ooh, I like that story. I hope you did too. Let's see what Albany thought. Albany, did you like listening to that story about Little Bear? Yeah. Oh, that was a good bit, wasn't it, Albany? Albany said he really did enjoy that story, and his favourite bit was when the stone wasn't a stone at all, when it was a little bird inside an egg. That was a good bit, wasn't it, Albany? So we hope you enjoyed that story too, and make sure you join us tomorrow for some museum craft and play, because we're going to be having fun thinking about our story, we're going to be making some bare handprints and a bare paper plate as well. So that will be tomorrow on Albany's Facebook page, but you can join us next Thursday for another museum story time. Thanks for joining us. Bye.